So this time I'd like to invite the acting chancellor. Put your hands together. legislation made provisions in relation to the offenders, probation, rehabilitation, and some vocational training. And we just heard from Mr. Apple, and NOC was one of those institutions that was covered under uh, this one piece of legislation. We're happy to say that uh, within the, the limitations of the uh, then legislation, the testimony of Mr. Apple shows that there was still hope and he's been given a second chance. Today, this new act, which was assented to in June this year, gives us a more holistic and comprehensive approach to the treatment of children in contact with the law. The act, as a sh uh, short title states, uh, is intended to amend and to consolidate the law in relation to criminal justice for juveniles and to provide for the establishment of facilities for custody for their education and the rehabilitation of the juvenile offender. I believe it was one Mr. Fortin writing in the book uh, Children's Rights and Development, Developing Law said, children who become involved in a crime do not thereby lose their rights to be treated as children. And we are guided by that principle. They have to be treated like children rather than as adults. We will recognize their vulnerability, we will recognize their lack of maturity. So the underlying aim of the recently minted legislation is to have children who are in contact with the law to be diverted away from the formal judicial process, from that place called the court. Court seems to be a last resort, given the context and the scheme of the act. Prior to that, children were charged over the various offenses, some of which have been abolished and for which they will pay us a visit. But now, before the children are uh, allowed to come to court, there are a variety of uh, diversion measures and even systems of warnings and referral to programs and agencies within the community when uh, they may have caused an infraction of the law. 
and the diversion of the juvenile away from the formal court process includes restorative, uh, res uh, uh, restorative measures and to deal with the juvenile to help him or her to understand where he or she has gone wrong. The Act also stipulates that it's, uh, diversion is the most appropriate and effective way to address juvenile crime and it allows for effective and timely intervention focused on correcting uh, offended behavior and it is presumed to be adequate to hold the juvenile accountable for his or her offense and for the offending behavior. And a series of measures have been set out in the Act. My eight or seven minutes does, uh, would not give me time to go through all of the diversionary measures. So if, as the last resort, first, if a child is in conflict with the law, in contact with the law, that child is, uh, the police, and in this case here, is not just any police, the Act provides for the rank above a sergeant, the commissioner of police is here, so senior officers will be underground working with us also, and we're grateful for that. So the Act provides for uh, them, to, for the children, the juvenile, to be uh, in a program, the police will coordinate that, and the DPP also will coordinate uh, that diversion program. Uh, if that fails, there is also the warning and the referral. The serious cases will come to the court. So if judicial proceedings commence for certain offenses, there are some safeguards in the Act where DPP must have give or fiat and there must be a pre-charge screening by DPP and the consent of the DPP must be obtained. So children will be brought to court at the whims and fantasy of anyone. Uh, the various offenses uh, for which DPP must give our consent are listed in the schedule to the Act, and I will advise you to get a copy of the Act because it's very instructive, it's very informative, and it's available online. Sentencing principle by which the court must be guided, as stated in the Act, it's very critical, it's very crucial. Custody, as you would have heard, is the last resort. There was a committee from England dealing with youth justice since 1979 said this about children being in custody. Once labeled a delinquent, a child is more likely to see himself as such, to associate with kindred spirits, to be a focus of attention for the police, and to become stereotyped. It is now widely accepted that conviction can have the effect of increasing rather than diminishing juvenile criminality. We are cognizant of that fact. The aim then in terms of the principle, or the principle in terms of sentencing then is set out in the act. We know the old uh, response to crime, the old thinking was based on, on punishment Crime was seen as a product of free uh, will or rational choice, and therefore an offender had to be punished for his or her choice. Uh, punishment related to the offense rather than the offender, and punishment had to reflect society's disapproval of the behavior of that uh, person, that young person. And the aim of punishment, you know, basically was based on retribution, deterrence, rehabilitation and incapacitation. And there are cases which would have set out uh, those principles. Uh, Benjamin and the Queen, which I will not go into this evening, but suffice it to say that the rehabilitative aspect just contemplated the rehabilitation of the particular offender so that he or she might resume his or her place as a law-abiding member of the community. Detriment was more uh, imposed. The, the, the aim mostly was to impose a deterrent element, so vis a vis the particular offender and a preventative uh, element, which against the particular offender, and to be an example to others. So imagine the full rigors of the criminal justice system and the punishment being imposed on children who are less developed, less mature, and vulnerable. 
We are happy to say that the sentence and principle as set out in the Act shows a sea change. The, it reflects a more restorative approach aimed at involving the offender, the victim, the parent, and the society in the entire process. It's dealing now with conflict resolution, conflict resolution sorry, rather than a retributive uh, resolution. Acknowledgement of responsibility on the part of the juvenile and rehabilitation, education, and reintegration into society. It affords a multi-sectoral approach or a multi-agency approach in this regard. And the key personnel, apart from the courts, would be the police, as I said, from Inspector of the DPP, Director of Public Prosecutions, the Director of Child Care and Protection Agency, and the Director of Juvenile Justice. I recently saw an article paper for that position. I believe it might have been uh, two or three weeks ago. And so we have to look at the role of these various personnel in reforming, in helping, in rehabilitating our children. It takes a village, it takes a community, it takes a nation, really, to raise a child. But you would have heard about the increase in the uh, age of criminal responsibility and the question of the legal capacity. So, uh, I'm being stated by Minister Rajatan, I just wish to say then that the court performing any functions performing, uh, pursuant to the Act must be guided by this uh, system, or must be guided by these principles, right? The further the well-being of juveniles, and therefore the best interest of the child must be the paramount consideration when making decisions, and we are guided by that. We must also encourage and facilitate juveniles having a meaningful life in the community by rehabilitation, education, reintegration, and a proportionate and appropriate accountability to victims and society. And that is taken directly from the act. And that's which we will be guided. And there are a raft of measures to achieve such a system. For example, the, the justice system shall be separate from that of an adult, emphasize rehabilitation, education, and reintegration. It must ensure that the juvenile is subject to meaningful consequences, proportionate to the offense and circumstances, recognizing the juvenile's greater dependency and reduced level of maturity. It must provide procedural protection to ensure that juveniles are treated fairly and humanely and that their rights are protected. And it must inform and involve parents of the juvenile and have measures in place to make sure that they are all part of the system. Victims are not left out. They, are provide, they must be provided with information about the proceedings and they are given an opportunity to participate and be heard wherever possible and to contribute to the rehabilitation of the juvenile. So the application of these measures is aimed to ensure fair and proportionate uh, accountability, reinforce respect for societal values, and to encourage the repair done to the victims and the community, to respect gender, ethnic, and cultural differences, and respond to the needs of juveniles with special requirements and therefore resort to detention must be a measure of last resort. So when they come to us, it will be a question when we have to consider all of those factors. And if the court decides that custody must be imposed, it must be done in conjunction with supervision and rehabilitation. And in sentencing the juvenile, the court must hold to the principle that the juvenile must be accountable for an offense, promote the juvenile's rehabilitation and education and reintegration into society, and to assist the juvenile to be rehabilitated, educated, and reintegrated as a law abiding citizen, and by the provision of effective programs to juveniles who are in custody. The best interest of the child, as I said before, must be, paramount, be a paramount consideration for us, and we must encourage them to have a meaningful uh, life 
by the stated principles being uh, rehabilitation, education, and graduation. And therefore, the least restrictive measures consistent with the protection of the public and the juvenile being able to retain his or her rights whilst in custody and having regular contact with their parents and other family members and being on a process of uh, supervision uh, which will involve their family members and the public uh, and also a review system for the time when they are in custody are some of the measures uh, we see uh, employed. Of course, the right to counsel and critical right for children. And as I said, together with key and critical uh, personnel, we intend to have uh, those measures in place. As I said, in a couple of weeks, the court will be in operation. Training has begun already for uh, our members of the court. Continuing legal and judicial education is something that we've always uh, emphasized in the Supreme Court. Uh, we have, for the specialized court, we have already identified two magistrates who have already started training locally and abroad. Chief Magistrate, Chief Justice, who's here, uh, magistrates, some of our judges. We have had the benefit of doing uh, study tours of other juvenile uh, institutions abroad. The US, Jamaica, Trinidad, to name a few. And we were able to compare, contrast, and to take away from there the best practices rather than reinvent the wheel. So we are proactive rather than reactive. So apart from the training and the identification of the magistrates, we have also gone further than that. We have had the courtroom specially prepared. And the Chief Justice herself, who has become an architect, has been overseeing that project along with the contractors. Child friendly room, the colors are different, so we no longer have the stoic, the, 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 the dull colors of the courtroom. Bright, I believe she, she mentioned uh, purple and pink and green and, <laughs> and orange and, and, and brown. <laughs> so those are the colors that can be seen. So it's a whole new uh, outlook now within the courtroom. We are also grateful for the help that we would have received earlier with, uh, with discussion from many uh, members of various uh, agencies that must play a part. We met uh, earlier on this, this year with DPP, Child Care and Protection Agency, Probation Office, uh, the various uh, NGOs, Ministry of uh, Public Security, and we've had discussion in relation to the way forward. UNICEF, we thank them most kindly for their kind contribution and support in setting up this court. And we are assured of their continued support in this regard. So together with the multi-sectorial uh, agencies or multi-stakeholders and the commitment and the guiding principles within the new legislation to answer Dr. Scott's question, youths can have a better life. And to answer Mr. Apple's, uh, well, to not answer really, but to reinforce what he has said, they also will be given 